So let's bring in the great Milt Stiegel now. I always like seeing his face. How are you doing, Milt? <laughs> I'm doing great. How about yourself? Yeah, always good. Uh, I'm 100%, of course. I opened my eyes this morning, so it was a win, Milt. Hey, there you go. you're yeah. an Ohio guy. So tell me, please, your thoughts on the name Cleveland Guardians. I have no idea what you're talking about. Maybe I'm, I'm, I haven't been watching enough TV. I'm, just, I'm, I'm like, okay. Just this morning, the well, Cleveland Indians announced they're changing their name to the Cleveland Guardians. Oh, they wow. dropped it like, I'm sorry, they dropped it like an hour and a half ago. So, yeah, okay. no time like the present. How do you feel about the name Cleveland Guardians? Uh, I mean, I, I like it better than the Indians, of course. So, But the Guardians, hey, if it works for those folks in Cleveland and Hopefully no one from Cleveland is listening to this because that's one of the worst cities in the world, but I'll leave it at that. But <laughs> if it works for those folks in Cleveland, I, I, I say go with it. I'm from Cincinnati, so, you know, we're we're south of Cleveland. But if it works for Cleveland, I say go with it. But I, I think it's good that they finally made that change, and hopefully there are other organizations who are also uh, in the line or who are doing what they were doing will also follow suit and, and, and make the change soon. So good job for the Cleveland Gardeners. I love it. <laughs> that's funny because that's like asking somebody from Hamilton what they think about the Argos new logo. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Mel, we are a couple of weeks away from week one in the uh, Canadian Football League, but we're two weeks into training camp. What are the stories that have grabbed your eye here since the camps opened? Uh, well, I, I think the main one, and it's you know it's near and dear to me because we're talking about my Bombers, is the health of Andrew Harris. Uh, they haven't come out and said exactly what his injury is. I think he's back now doing some running. I don't know if he's back to full practicing, but I mean, that has to be a concern because that team, I mean, they're, they're in a position to go back again, but their two most important positions, uh, Andrew Harris, and of course the quarterback, Zach, we just don't know, uh, if they're going to make it the entire year. I mean, Andrew has done it, but Zach, of course, hadn't done it in the past. So there's two concerns right there. Also in Hamilton, the quarterback situation. We haven't heard who's going to be the starter there. I mean, either one of those guys have shown in the past that they can be a starting quarterback uh, because that team, and I think they are the favorite right now to not only go to the Great Cup, but win the Great Cup. And it's going to be, uh, a lot of it's going to depend on their quarterback play. So uh, I think those are the two main stories right now. There are so many out there uh, that we could talk about. And, and I guess number one is that the fact that we aren't talking about it and we're going to have a season. So I think everyone involved is, is happy for that. Yeah, that's the good news, of course. And to be honest with you, I, <laughs> I'm hearing the behind-the-scenes stories and what a nightmare it is in terms of COVID protocol, making sure guys don't get hurt, mm. right, in terms of tailoring your yeah. drills to not have any more serious injuries. But can you imagine, Melt, not having preseason games? Can you imagine? Like, did you make those NFL rosters based on your play in the preseason? This is unfair to the players. No. Nobody's fault. <laughs> but you know what I mean, though. Nobody's fault there's no preseason but a major hindrance to the normal mechanism of a training camp. Without a doubt. And you think about the younger guys or guys who are really on the bubble. Uh, that's when they make the team. That's when they can make a name for themselves. And I know it personally. Uh, when I first got to the CFL, you know, no one knew, knew who I was. So I needed those preseason games. And I needed every single second of those preseason games in the NFL. So it's unfortunate. And I know teams are having inner squad scrimmages, but inner squad scrimmages don't, uh, match up to preseason games. You know, there's nothing else like it. You get your opportunity. You could be the greatest practice player or training camp player in the world. But when those lights come on, when you're playing against someone who's also trying to make a team, who's hungry, uh, who's on an opposing team, that's when you really can find out what type of player you have. So it's unfortunate because there may be some GMs or some head coaches who miss out on some good players because they didn't get to see them in that game situation. Because myself and I'm sure every other player have been around guys where you see them in practice and you're like, this guy can't play, but you get him in that game situation, those lights come on, and you see a different type of player. So it's unfortunate we don't have those games, uh, but hopefully they are able to keep the best players based on what they see in training camp. Okay, here come the viewer questions on cue, or comments. Mandy Donald in Edmonton says, uh, don't forget to mention most handsome panelist. You and Dunnigan yes. uh, ever yes. arm wrestle yes. over that? Or oh, whoa, like... whoa, 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 whoa. There, there's no dispute in that. I mean, I mean, I'm first, and who's ever second, they're, they're far second. So Dunnigan, Sanchez, I mean, even Kate, she's on there now. So and 
Kate doesn't look, she's a nice looking young lady, but she still doesn't look as good as me. So I'm number one and you can pick whoever you want to be set. So it doesn't uh, Milton, <laughs> Milton, you know, Dunnigan would say the yeah. exact same thing. And two, you forgot Jim Barker. You forgot to put Jim I forgot Barker. my man Jim. I forgot <laughs> Jim. Oh, I'm, and you know what? I, I love Jim so much. We have a great relationship. We forced Jim to change his outfits because when he first came in uh, for that in 2018, some of his suits looked like they were from 1935, 1940. So we forced him to up his game, and now he's up to par, and I'm looking to work <laughs> with Jim again. He's such a great man. He has so much knowledge. He brings a different – he comes from a different angle, being a GM, head coach, assistant coach. He comes from a different angle. So I'm, I'm definitely happy and excited to work with Jim again. Oh, I know. I can't wait to see you guys on again. And speaking of, we got to throw some flowers at the feet of Rod Smith, who's moving into the play-by-play booth. And as you yeah. mentioned, Kate taking over. So obviously Rod's got to be excited about that. Yes, and he, he's wanted to do that for years. You know, early on in his career, uh, he knew that it would be difficult having a young family. But, you know, his kids are are grown and graduated from college, I think as young as uh, his daughter is maybe a senior. So this is something he wanted to do. Uh, he, we love having him on the panel. He was perfect for it, but he's going to be even better out there. I mean, Rod is, he, he's a special talent. Uh, he loves the game so much. And more than that, he's just a great person. I'm going to miss having him around because he's such a great person. But uh, Kate, she's worked with us before. She's going to step in and do a great job. So, you know, both of those uh, individuals are great, and they're going to be great for the CFL once again this upcoming season. Oh, yeah, no kidding. I said yesterday that I just feel good watching Kate on, no matter what she's talking about, NBA, CFL, you name it. I just, she's so good. Um, oh, boy, there's a lot of great questions here, Milt. I could keep you for hours. Uh, Mike in Toronto <laughs> says, if Milt owned the Argos, what would he do Ooh. to get fans to come out to the games? Have you thought about that? I would have to unretire. I mean, <laughs> you bring <laughs> me back on play. the field, they'll come. <laughs> I, I would have to. I, I, I could give you maybe uh, four or five plays, but that's just about it. I mean, it, 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 it's a difficult sale. You know, even when they were good, uh, it, they, they didn't. Many fans didn't come out. Uh, I mean, it definitely helps when you are playing well, but. They, they have to promote those players more. They have to get them out in the community more. Maybe they are doing it. Maybe pinball and those guys are doing it. But they have to get their faces out there. They have to go out there and grind like no other. Because all you need is, if you could get 18, 19 average stat in that big city, I mean, that would be big for the Argos. I know it's easier said than done because it hasn't happened, but they have to get those main faces out there and sell that product. Because if you don't, I mean, if you think because just because you're winning, because it's shown in the past that fans are going to come out, it's not going to happen. You got to get out and grind and, and get in the faces of those young individuals. And I think they have an opportunity to get some decent crowds. Darren in Salt Lake City, Utah, wants to know. And happy Pioneer Day, by the way, Darren in Utah. He says, does Milt think there will be multiple injuries early in the season? Man, that's a tough one. Uh, if I was if I was a bet man, I, I, I would just have to say yes. And I and I hate to answer that with that with that question with that answer, but w- w- these guys just haven't played football. They just haven't played football. Yeah, they're going through training camp, and but when you get in that game situation and and you think you're Superman and you can do uh, you you can leap tall buildings and all that stuff, you know those injuries are going to happen. I hate to say it, but they are going to happen. Let's hope they're not uh, season ending or our guys are, are out for multiple, multiple games, but we're going to see some injuries early on. Another thing we may see is not so great of football. There may be some sloppiness involved, and I think that'll roll over and get, you know, after the first or second game. But early on, I mean, these guys just haven't been on the football field. We have to expect that there's going to be some sloppy play, especially if you got a younger team. I hate to say it, but a team like Ottawa, uh, Paul LaPolice is a great coach but he's dealing with some young cats. So there's going to be some sloppy play early on, and let's hope they get it ironed out uh, sooner than later. Well, you know what, Milt? I could. I wish we could sit and go have a, talk, a coffee and talk about this because, like, this one thing, drop passes, missed tackles, blown assignments for sure. But in Saskatchewan, with all these injuries, retirements, you saw Brendan Labatt uh, going to take the year yeah. off. It's a patchwork offensive line. You blow an assignment there and miss a block, and Cody Fajardo gets Ooh. killed. It's your season. That's kind of what they're looking at here, <laughs> right? Yeah, it, it, it's difficult. It's difficult. And if you don't have a quarterback in this league, you don't have a chance to win. You know, you have to have that 
that that veteran quarterback who's seen it all, and Cody Bajardo is that guy. So I'm sure they're going to go uh, all out to make sure they protect him, even if it's taken away from something else. Uh, they're going to make sure they protect him because if you if he's not on the field, you don't have a shot. I don't care who you have around him, what type of scheme you have, you have to have him on the field. So they're going to pull out every single stop to make sure he's protected. That may take away from you scoring a bunch of points. You may have to depend on your defense or some special teams play, but they need him the entire year and into the playoffs if they want to have a shot of making it to the Great Cup and winning it. So they're going to have to do some special things within that offense to make sure he does, he's not taking a pound in, uh, if they want to have a chance of winning and possibly getting to the Great Cup. And that's the fun part of coaching. And you got Jason Moss there as the offensive coordinator. They'll figure it out. Mm. But that's just one of the concerns here. Uh, Chris Bird in Toronto. He's an Argos fan. He says, Milt Stiegel or Jock Climey? <laughs> Get out of here with you, Jock Climey. Get out of here Jock, with you, Jock. What, 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 what's the question? <laughs> it really doesn't matter. It's not the, a the question. The only thing Jock can... Only thing Jock can do better than me is be a lawyer because I didn't go to law school. So he, Jock is real. He's a great lawyer. So that's it. Besides that, Jock can't touch me in anything. That's I can't. Be, Chris, I can't believe you asked that. I, I appreciate it. I don't know. Maybe Jock paid you, or you're one of Jock's friends. I'm not sure, but that's the only <laughs> thing Jock can touch me in. And that's being a lawyer. That's it. <laughs> and like you say, you never tried. You never Jock. tried to be a lawyer. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, you might have beat him there. No. Wayne and Victoria. <laughs> Wayne and Victoria says. If pinball can't fill the stadium, then nobody can. Ooh. And I got to be honest, Ooh. that's what I would do. Pinball would be my guy. I would have him everywhere. I'm with Wayne. It's like if yeah. pinball can't yeah. do it, I don't think it can be done. But at least pinball's there running the team as GM, which, by the way, how did you uh, – Looks like, hey, they signed all those guys. Looks like pinball knows what he's doing. Uh, I think pinball is more in a figure fit. Uh, I, I know he's out there, you know, speaking to the guys, but the one who's actually uh, doing all the bird dog, and I, I don't think that's pinball. I don't think that's his style. Even when he was coaching, pinball wasn't necessarily the coach. I mean, he knew how to motivate those guys. He knew how to get them going. He knew the schemes and everything that were being ran, but pinball, that's just not him. And he'll tell you that in a second. That's just not him, but he's a special individual. And uh, as you mentioned, he needs to get out there, but when he gets out there, he needs to bring some of those players along with him because when those fans come to the game, pinball is on the field. Pinball is up in the booth or pinball may be on the sideline, but pinball is on the field. And they want to see the players who they come to cheer on. So, yes, pinball, he needs to be out in the forefront because he's more recognizable in Toronto than any other CFL player and maybe in the history of the CFL. <laughs> one of the most recognizable players in CFL, period. But he needs to bring along some players with him because he understands that those fans are coming to see those players and not pinball. Hey, it's funny you say that, by the way. And some of those free agents that they sign are friends of mine, right? Charleston Hughes, uh, Cam Judge. Yes. So Murph was doing all the work, but those players told me they'd bring in exactly. pinball as the closer out of the bowl. He's the closer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and that, that, that's smart. That is very smart, yes. yes. Yeah, very smart. exactly. Yes. All right, Milt, hey. Always good. Can't wait to see you when you get up here. Safe travels. So thanks for the time. Oh, thanks for having me on. Take care. The outstanding Milt Stiegel joining us from Hotlanta, the hub of the South. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.